It's daytime. We are defo safe. Sort of. A group of middle school kids are waiting in a sort of line at the school bus stop on a quiet country road surrounded by a forest. A few houses are scattered in between. The children chat and laugh and play on phones and tease each other the way friends do. It's early, but already it's a glorious day. Everyone is in summer shorts. All except Mona, who has full length trousers on to hide her false leg. She makes herself as small as she can, trying to hide in herself as she leans on her crutch. Terry stands next to her and cannot hide. An unfocused bouncy ball of kinetic energy, high on at least two behavioural spectrums and proud of his top positions. He takes the words high functioning as a great compliment. Terry's body channels what he is thinking immediately, acting out whatever his mind pushes out of his mouth. He is Mona's bestest, bestie, friend forever. He is Mona's only friend. Harry, I think, or Scaly, both, a pointed horn on his face. Too dark to scope clear, but it was Big Z, real Big Z. Mona is stiffly explaining her previous night's ordeal, not wanting to draw attention from the other kids. Terry is an attention magnet and is acting like a bear, tearing at flesh. Big bear? Like claws? Scratchy? They big big, can take a face off. Saw it online. No, not, not a bear, Big Z bigger. Mona dismisses him. Darren joins the waiting line and is as welcome as an arctic blast down the back of your trousers. He is everyone's worst enemy and a big lump of a lad. He immediately starts shaking down the line, collecting snacks and whatever else he wants from everyone, like a mobster. No one fights against it. They've seen what happens to those who have. Mona and Terry haven't noticed his arrival yet. Terry stomps heavily while doing muscle poses. 1980s wrestler big? They are big, like big big. Seen them pile drive people through a car. Genuine, saw it online. Mona shakes her head, almost trying to shake out the nightmare vision she saw last night. No. Not a wrestler, bigger. Rhino? Terry puts his arm on his nose as a reference. No, big bigger, says Mona, getting frustrated. Terry clarifies. I'm definitely not a wrestler. No, Mona insists. The biggest bear we have here is a brown bear, average height of four foot nine. Rhinos are only found on the African continent. And 1980s wrestlers are only found in wrestling rings in the 1980s. Not here, in my backyard, now. It's big, and it's been coming around for weeks. You must have heard the roaring. Terry shrugs. Been busy secretly filming for my online channel most nights. Mum banned me from doing it downstairs since I started doing unboxing vids. Terry gets his phone out and brings up his video online. In the video, Terry climbs up on the kitchen table. He is uncharacteristically calm and controlled. He places a stopwatch facing the camera one side of him and places a heavily taped, overly wrapped, medium sized box in front of him. He looks at the camera, nods once slowly. He starts the clock and then savagely, salivating, rampantly rips open the box, sending paper, cardboard and the white rice innards flying everywhere. He stops the clock on two seconds. His mum pops up behind him. She looks furious. 
Before the shouting can leave her angry red face, the video ends. A caption comes up. A Terry Ball production. He has one subscriber in Mona, one like from a profile called Daman, and one dislike from Unboxing Mom. Terry is beaming proud. I wanted to make it different as everyone is unboxing cool stuff, so I gave myself two seconds to unbox grocery stuff. Rice seemed like a good start. Mum didn't think so. Went everywhere. Confined to my room. And she clicked a salty dislike. Uncalled for. She doesn't even follow me. A self-inquiring Terry continues reasoning out loud. I think I need a catchphrase sign-off to make me vids really pop. Something classy. Foreign French, maybe. What's French for sayonara? The latest? You know any Latin? Mona shrugs, still in her own head, replaying the sighting. Or better than unboxing, we get a clip of your monster. Terry's brain is working out an idea. Mona's pupils widen in fear at the suggestion. You wouldn't want to record the roaring beast. It was pure puke mutant terror buckets. And the sound was Eric Vile Von Vomits. <laughs> Darren has leaned into the pair and produced a massive burp in both of their faces. He finds his belching amusing. They find it hard not to throw up. Eat up, says a satisfied Darren. Dude, your mum be serving stale donkey dung for breakfast again. Darren grabs Terry with his big sausage fingered fist like he is holding a wobbling gerbil. His other hand goes into Terry's backpack, searching. He brings out Terry's wrapped lunch. Mona's head sinks into her shoulders in a turtle-like defence, which forces a muted voice up, over and out of her vocal cords. Leave him alone, says the whispering air leaving Mona's mouth. Don't flex yet, I'm working my way down to you. Darren throws a side reply. Mona's chin hits her own collarbone as he tries to draw her head down further into her shell, her spine retracting down at least two vertebrae. Darren unwraps Terry's sandwich. He looks at it, disgusted. It's a shocking mess. It's like Terry tipped the contents of a neglected fridge onto a carpenter's dirty floor and then scooped it all up with two pieces of wet bread. Then, put ketchup on it. Terry looks overly proud of his puke-inducing production. It's mostly cheese spread, ketchup, bean sprouts and cornflakes with a smidge of sauerkraut. It tastes weird, needs more sugar and salt and either more or less sauerkraut. But at least I know you won't steal it from me. I call it... The Sour Power Cheesy Pleasy! I name it sandwiches now! Darren drops it to the floor and stamps on it in an explosion of yuck. I know I should be disappointed, but it was a mercy killing. Terry looks down at the inedible modern art mess. Darren shoves Terry backwards to the floor. Terry falls like he talks flailing expressively. Darren grabs the backpack off Mona roughly, which rocks her on her crutch. Teddy tries to get up to defend his friend, but gets pushed down again with a hard bump. Oh wait here, Terry offers up from down on the floor. Don't go in the bag, please. Mona forces out more quiet words. Terry towers over Mona as he puts his hand in the bag. He quickly brings it out with a loud shriek. Ah! Darren has a rat trap on his fingers. Another of Mona's traps. The other kids giggle loudly at Darren, which drives on his rage. He pulls the trap off, causing more pain, and throws it, 
which sends it bouncing off the heads of everyone in the laughing line. TBH, she warned him. Dude, I should have filmed that. Darren's need to pass the pain causes him to kick Mona's crutch away from her. She doesn't fall, but wobbles awkward. Her vulnerability drives his need onwards. Bullies know physical pain is nothing compared to mental blows. I heard you talking, talking about monsters. We all know the only monster around here is Monster Mona, one-legged freak, so scary her mum run off in fear. The mental punch has Mona out on her feet. Leave it alone! Terry can feel Mona's pain. He gets up and is pushed back down on his sandwich. It paints his backside with an awful awfulness. Ah oh man, me sandwich bit me! Mona braces herself as she knows Darren isn't done. On careers day, when the teacher asked the class what they enjoyed doing, he said, destroying stuff. The careers teacher suggested he might like a job training to be a demolition expert. But he already is. He doesn't need to hone his skills. He was taught it from a very early age and he doesn't stop until he decimates. If you're going to film, you should post the freak girl, Monster Mona. Something about the M word irks Mona. It makes her resist. I'm not a monster. I did see one. The volume of her own voice shocks Mona and the crowd. Her classmates can't remember a time she spoke, let alone shouted. Yeah, it was a big scaly bear thing with a rhino's head and did wrestling moves. Wait, what, what did it look like again? Terry backs his friend and fellow victim. She's making up monsters, just so she ain't the only one in town. Darren continues to swing his verbal sledgehammer. He grabs Mona by the backpack and lifts her up off the floor. I trapped me a real monster. Look at the one-legged lame -o. Mona struggles free from the imposing boy. She stumbles on the crutch that's on the ground. She falls. The rest of the kids in line see her tumble with mouth agape concern. Then they notice her trouser leg has rolled up a bit, revealing her prosthetic leg. They have never seen it, but have always wondered. Mona looks at the pity and curiousness on their faces. She hates it. She struggles to get up. Terry tries to help her, but she pushes him off. The school bus pulls up and the kids start to get on. As startling as this scene is, it's not a rare occurrence to see Darren make a classmate cry. Monster Mona, go tell your mom. Darren lays a final blow in after the bell as he gets on the bus. Ignore him, his scalp's on too tight. I got another sandwich you can split with me at dinner time if you like. You like cocoa flakes, soy sauce and squirty cheese, right? I call it the Choco Cheese Rumble Tumble! Terry says while picking sauerkraut off his pants. Mona can't stop the frustrated tears as she runs from her friend, the bus and her pain. She carries her crutch under her arm. Is that a no to the sandwich? Terry calls after her. Mona disappears into the forest. The bus begins to leave without Terry. He starts to chase it, the half of sandwich that is stuck to his pants following along 